All right, so we were just talking about belt tension, alignment, and how good lagging can help out in both of those situations. Now let's talk a bit more about wear patterns on your belting and on your buckets and how we can help to improve the performance of your bucket elevator. So first of all, let's look at wear patterns on your belt and issues with belt wear. Uh, the things that can happen to provide, that can cause belt wear are obviously just the life of the belt. You consider when you first put the belt in and you think everything's great, you've got it all stretched out, maybe you even left it hang for a number of days, but you put it in, you tighten up the take ups and sure enough, after a short period of time, days or a week or so, you have to take out a little bit more because there is gonna be some initial stretch. That's understandable. Every belt, whether it's PVC or whether it's a rubber belt is gonna stretch some. One and a half percent, possibly as much as 2%. So you're gonna have to take that out, do the take up a couple times and uh, hopefully after it's gotten seated in for uh, a number of weeks, months, you're not gonna have to take anything out for a while. Now you might notice after this bucket elevator has been running for a number of years that suddenly it seems like it's stretching again. And you say, well, that seems odd. I didn't think it would stretch again after that. Well, it's not really supposed to. So you need the initial stretch is just the cords inside of the belt and the rubber itself stretching a certain amount, that one and a half to 2%. But when it starts to stretch again, what that means is those cords are starting to break down. They're starting to deteriorate. And what's gonna happen then is you could be in line for a belt failure just because it's stretching too much. Other types of failures you're gonna see, and I've got a couple of photos here, of one that I took here not too long ago. Uh, you can look at the back side of your belt, and it's important when you're doing a bucket elevator inspection, not just to look at whatever you can see up front. There's so much in the back or underneath or around or beside a bucket elevator that you've got to do a lot of inspection. And it goes uh, the same for the belt itself. Now, on the back side, if you look at, if you start to see that it's coming off, the back cover is starting to come off, that can be for a number of reasons. One, it could just be wear. It's been in there for so long. It's done so much work. It's had so much wear, it's starting to come off but it could be that uh, oil situation I talked about earlier. Possibly that there's more oil content in this product than you realize. Maybe it's a feed product and it's not a superior oil resistant belt. So you're losing that back cover. So what happens then is your belt doesn't have the traction that it used to. Even if you've got good lagging, put in brand new lagging, if you're starting to have pieces and parts coming off of the belt on the back cover, you're losing some of your traction just because it's not uh, as able to get that traction. But even more importantly, when you start to lose that cover, you're losing the static conductivity of the belt because that's where it comes through. The rest of the belt is just poly cords or cotton cords or something. It's the rubber material or the PVC material that has the static conductivity. So you don't want to be losing those covers or you're starting to lose the static conductivity of your belt and it gets to be dangerous. Uh, let's look at buckets then. The next thing with buckets is when you have bucket wear, most of the time people think of bucket wear as happening on the front lip, on the corners, uh, or on the sidewalls. Very common for those things to happen. Unless you've got a bucket that is very thick in the front, very thick on the corners and on the side, then it's gonna start to wear out more quickly. And fortunately, MaxiLift has a good line of quality buckets that all have a lot of thickness in these areas, so it's gonna last a long time. But say, for instance, if you have a digging in the boot, like you have product that builds up in the boot and those buckets come around and they have to dig through there, it's gonna wear down any bucket, no matter how thick it is. You might need to use a different material and use a digger bucket. The digger bucket's gonna be slightly bigger around the side. If it's a steel bucket or a nylon bucket, it can take the abuse better than the poly bucket and it's gonna be able to keep these buckets from wearing out because as you start to lose any of that length on the front, you're losing capacity. And if you lose capacity there, then suddenly uh, you're running as much horsepower or you're running your motor, but you're not getting the capacity that you want. And you could eventually have a plug boot if it can't keep up with what you're trying to feed it. But there's other types of wear patterns too. Let's look at a couple of these photos that you're gonna be able to see now. Uh, it's a very unusual situation, but we had a customer call and he say, well, I've got buckets that are breaking. We don't know why, because they seem to be fine. They don't seem to have any wear on them. He sent us a couple of buckets to inspect and we looked at them closer. As you can see in these photos, it was the corner of the bucket, the back corner that was getting the wear. And you think, how is that possible? We certainly didn't know until we got a photo of the inlet feeding the bucket elevator. In this case, we've got two rows of buckets, and, uh, but the, the inlet is coming in from an angle. It's hitting the inlet of the bucket elevator, but the, the action that's going on in that inlet area is bouncing it around to the point that most of the product is hitting back in a back corner. Very unusual 
Now the situation there was one in which they can't change that transition. It's in there, the millwrights basically, I would have to say, unfortunately made a mistake to put it in that way, but they can't change it. So the only option we had was to get them a bucket that has a lot thicker corner so that it can take the, the abuse and the wear in that corner better than the, uh, the CC Max that we put in uh, Tiger CCs for them. So that's one thing we can do. Now when it comes to the uh, performance of your bucket elevator, we get away from the wear part, part pattern, which is important, but let's just think about the performance of your bucket elevator too and the maintenance you can do there. You might think, well, we're not getting this product in or getting it discharged as well as we need to. It could be because you need venting. Now this bucket that I'm holding right here has a number four vent pattern. And what that means, we've got two rows of vents on the bottom, and we've also got vent holes on the side. Very important for mash products, powdery products, any type of feed or anything like that, because the product is trying to go in when you're at the inlet, the air has to go out. These buckets are always full of something, whether it's air or product. When it comes to the discharge, the bucket is trying to discharge, the product wants to come out, but once again, it can't come out because it's stuck in there. You have to have vent holes to allow air to come in from behind. And that's gonna improve the performance of your bucket elevator. If you have just grain that you're running in your bucket elevator, it might not be as important to have the vent holes, but it doesn't hurt anything and actually helps when the, when the buckets are going up and down to have that venting because it helps the airflow in general. Now, another photo I wanted to show you here shows uh, some HD Max buckets that were just installed on a belt. We had the opportunity to see this put into a customer's facility and it was really nice to take a look at this. They really looked great out there as they were getting pulled into the, to the bucket elevator. Unfortunately, when we see, saw the backside of the belt, you'll notice here that uh, the bolts had been pulled in too tight. I talked about that in the other session, that if you tighten up your elevator bolts too much, it actually puckers up the belt. And so this belt is gonna experience premature wear as a result of having those bolts pulled in too tight, unfortunately. So and the thing I want to mention about that is I know that putting on buckets on a belt is monotonous. It takes a long time. I've done it myself. And I know that you normally put the newest guy who doesn't have any experience on it. You give him an impact wrench and you say, tighten up these bolts and put on those buckets. And he's going to try to do the best job he can and tighten them down there really tight. Unfortunately, he might get them too tight in a case like this by putting the least experienced person on that without the right training, you could cause belt damage. So let's look at some other things with bucket elevators now that we're gonna move past just the belt wear and bucket wear situation.